Hi everyone, I am outside the house of an amazing gentleman, a Mr. Johan Ruiz. Now, Johan received a heart transplant 19 years ago at Grosseskia. And this year, at 80 years of age, he has been asked to participate in the World Transplant Games. So I'm going to go and chat to Johan and find out a little more about this amazing individual. Okay, Johan, tell me a little bit about who you are. I don't know. Johan Roos, born 80 years ago. Little town in the district of Little Town, Krugersdorp in Gauteng. I had a career in local government, uh, to which I was attached for about 40 years. And um, I retired. I think I was about 58 when I had a heart attack. I had a bypass, which was really successful. And during 1998, we moved to Cape Town. And uh, we were just here for a few months when I started to experience problems with my heart again. Um, yeah, it was diagnosed as cardiomyopathy. It simply means that the, the heart muscle uh, doesn't function anymore. Well, not anymore, but it has been affected. And um, when I was examined by the cardiologists, uh, I was declared uh, terminally ill, which meant that there was no medical treatment. And I was told that the only alternative would be a, a transplant. So they referred me to Khrushchev. Uh, if, if I look back at what has happened to me, I think that was one of the best things that could ever have happened to me because I was uh, received there by the most supportive team. I, I really learned what it, what it meant to me to suffer physically in one respect that your movements are sluggish. You, there's no power, your, your muscles just doesn't want to react. You have to sleep if you can, because I rarely sleep. I had a, a heart, my heart was diffused twice, but my heart stands still. Twice. But as these things go in life, both times I was in hospital and uh, both times I, I was uh, resuscitated. So I, I've been on the waiting list uh, for that time when on a Saturday afternoon we, I received a call from Khrushchev and they said to me, they got a heart. And I said to this guy, Ach, nie, man. you know, the, the All Blacks and Springboks <laughs> are playing a test this afternoon. Will I be able to see it, watch it? So this guy said to me, no, you'll, you'll still be able, but you just come in and we can make preparation. And, but the transplant was done that the morning of the 7th of November. 1999. Uh, that had a major, a real major effect on my life. I, I accepted life as, as a fact. I, I lived my life, I did my things without ever being aware of what life really is. 
when I woke up the morning of the 7th, I felt this new life in me that had happened. And while I was undergoing tests for the transplant, one of the doctors came to me. He was an elderly old gentleman and he said to me, you know, the transplant costs a lot of money. Why don't you just go home, watch television and let things be? Because that money could be used for a lot of purposes. Uh, I said that that was the one time in my life when I left this guy without saying a word. But that later on made me determined to show and to put back because I know my contribution at that age was little, but that's what I'm doing now. That's why I'm getting involved with this little children and trying to help. How did you feel when you heard that you had the opportunity to go to the World Games? Yeah, I, I, my feeling was one of achievement that uh, I was able to to uh, uh, master something, if I could use the word, uh, something that I always considered just beyond me. And I sort of want to carry over and to motivate people and to say, but if I can do that, mm. You too. When you look at an old, as the Heisgunde called me, an old book, <laughs> um, one, one should ask oneself, but why? why? Why should I be supported? And my, my, and my reason for that is that I, I, I want to show the world, not, not just South Africa, I want to show the world because I've heard that most probably I'll be the first person over 80 in the, in the world that will participate in the International Transplant Games. And I want to show the world it is possible. We can reach this. We can get there, but unfortunately, to show the world, I've got to get there. And to get there, I don't have the means. I don't have the financial means. And if there's somebody who say, oh, okay, I've got a few quid, skip one bottle of whiskey <laughs> or whatever, a few cokes, <laughs> and say, all right, let's see whether the Obok can do it. I'd, I'd like to do that.